The State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Game of the Week is brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. By Budweiser. Grab a cold, fresh Budweiser. It's game time. By Edward Jones. More than 130 years of experience helping individuals build financial security. By ConAgra Foods. We set America's table at home and away. And by American Airlines and American Eagle, where you get a great low fare and a lot more airline. Valley Game of the Week presented by State Farm and welcome back to the Knapp Center. Over 5,000 expected today here in Des Moines, Iowa. A win today. This would be the best start in 10 years for the Salukis. And Matt Painter is in his first season as head coach of the Salukis at the age of 33. He is the third youngest head coach in Southern Illinois history. He was the top assistant under Bruce Weber the past five seasons. Painter is a 94 graduate of Purdue where he played under Gene Cady. Let's check the starting lineups for both these teams. Brought to you by Bud Light. A couple of seniors in there for the uh, Southern Illinois Salukis. Brad Korn, Sylvester Willis, Darren Brooks, Brian Turner, and Stetson Hairston. He's a good one. He'll wear number 25 for Southern Illinois. Meanwhile, for Drake, they do not have one player that's a senior on scholarship. Very young team. This is a team that likes to press. They like to push it forward. Powell, Murphy, Randolph, Robinson, and Grant are Bud Light starting lineups for the Drake Bulldogs. Dr. Tom Davis is Drake's 23rd head basketball coach. He is the all-time winningest coach in the University of Iowa basketball history. He spent 13 years there. He ranks number 11, by the way, among the winningest active NCAA Division I basketball coaches, 545 wins. Scott Highmark takes a look at our Chrysler keys to the game. Well, Southern Illinois, they're going to have to lock down on D. The Salukis have held their opponents to 37% shooting from the field. They'll need that type of effort on the defensive end. Darren do excel. Darren Brooks is out to prove he's one of the best players in the Valley. He's averaging 17 points per game. He's assumed a huge offensive role for the Salukis and for Drake. The airtight pressure. Drake forces their opponents into 17 turnovers a game with their full court pressure. That pressure must pay dividends for the Bulldogs. And finally, they got to pound the boards. They were out-rebounded by 19 versus Colorado State. They've got to keep Southern off of the offensive glass. Chrysler keys to the game brought to you by your Chrysler Jeep dealers and the Chrysler Town & Country. The series looks like this. Southern Illinois has an eight-game winning streak against the Bulldogs. That's their longest current streak against any Valley team. And the tip is knocked out of bounds. And it's Southern Illinois basketball. The Salukis, now the officials are going to converge and maybe change that call, and they do. It goes to Drake, and Drake will have the first possession. That's the correct call. You can see Sylvester Willis got the best of that tip. Drake gets the opportunity to get on the board first. Nick Grant will inbound for Drake there in their home whites with blue trim. Inbound comes to Murphy. Murphy's one of their top scorers. And Korn gets a partial block, and it's back to the Salukis for their first possession. Well, Drake will mix up their defense as they come out in a man-to-man, -man, but expect them to run a lot of different zone looks, a lot of different man-to-man, -man, run to jump. They'll use some full court pressure as well. This is Korn on the left wing. He can shoot the three, one of the top three-point shooters in the conference. They swing it right side. Salukis will be patient. New steal for the Drake Bulldogs. Korn gets it back, no call. Fans wanted a call, they don't get it. Hairston, the lefty for three, no good. It's not out of bounds, and it's going to be a foul against the Salukis, and that's going against Stetson Hairston. Well, not exactly the way Matt Painter had drawn up his first possession of the game, but good hustle by Korn. They get a wide open shot by Hairston, just can't get it to go down. Hairston whistled for the first foul in this game. Fans are on their feet waiting for that first bucket. Here at Drake. Lonnie Randolph will run the show most times. Inside to Robinson. This is Joshua Robinson for Drake. Kick it out to Nick Grant. Robinson gets it back and then gets it swatted away by Darren Brooks. Well, Darren Brooks was a member of the all-defensive team last year in the Valley along with Stetson. Hairston's got those long arms. Good closeout that time. Also part of the most improved team in the Missouri Valley Conference. 15 on the shot clock. A three from the right side is no good. Up-tempo pace from Drake. You're going to see that on both ends of the floor. Well, expect them to play 11, maybe even 12 guys here today. Dr. Tom likes to run that system, run them in and out, and go with the guys that are playing well. But he'll use 10, 11 guys. Hairston kicks it out to Brian Turner. Still looking for a first points. Offensive rebound, Brooks. Corn, pump fake. Shot from 10 off the glass, rattles out. And it's pulled away by the Bulldogs. Randolph wants to push it. Get some handles. 
Yeah, he's a tough matchup. Matt Painter believes Stetson Harrison's their best on the ball defender in their starting lineup, so he's got Harrison on Randolph. Powell with the miss, still looking for our first points in this game, no score. The Missouri Valley Conference Game of the Week, our first of the season, presented by State Farm. Sylvester Willis, he's been around for a while. Jump stop, that's a strong move. Sylvester Willis, the 6'7", fifth-year senior. Well, he's a great athlete. If he can get close to the basket, he can do a lot of damage. you got to keep him out of the lane if you're great. Boy, Randolph is quick. Penetrates inside, rattles out, gets his own rebound, goes back up, partially blocked. Drake comes away with it. Good look underneath. They can't get that to fall, and it's pulled away by Southern Illinois. Brian Turner pulled it away. Nifty move here by Harrison. Drake looked to Corn. 4-0 Southern Illinois. What a great look that time by Stetson. Harrison Drake can't take advantage of the opportunity, and Harrison comes down with the beautiful delivery. That's his second personal, though. That's going to go against Stetson Harrison, the junior from Belleville East High School out of Fairview Heights. See that little drop over his head to Corn. He's got eyes in the back of his head going right, dishes it over his shoulder to Corn for the layup. Jamal Tatum, a freshman from Jefferson City, has checked in the game for Southern Illinois. Highly recruited out of Palias High School in the state of Missouri. A double team. Now Stetson Harrison has to take a seat because of those two personal fouls. And dribbling into trouble there was Lonnie Randolph, and it's back to the Salukis. Well, Matt Painter very excited about the development of Jamal Tatum, the freshman from Jefferson City. And what a luxury. Stetson Harrison picks up two quick ones. You, you get to bring in one of the best youngsters in the Valley in Jamal Tatum. Tatum coming off a very big game against Southeast Missouri State. He was 4 of 5 from behind the arc. And as a team, though, Saluki's really struggling shooting the three, only 17 of 60 coming into this game. Well, that provided a big lift in their last game against Southeast Missouri with those four big ones. And again, you see Drake mixing up the defense. That time they went to a little three-quarter court, full court pressure. Horn, good look to Willis underneath. They kick it on the baseline. Right side, the miss, and pulled away by Pantel Murphy. Salukis, though, get it back. Brooks. Sylvester lost the handle. And it's pulled away again by Murphy. Both teams sloppy, handling the ball here early. Randolph underneath. Pump fake and a foul on Willis. Joshua Robinson, a 6'2 sophomore from New Jersey, will go to the line. Well, we know Lonnie Randolph's going to try to get in the lane, Dan, and he's going to continue to penetrate until Southern Illinois will stop. You see the great delivery, the pump fake, gets Willis in the air, draws the foul, but it's going to be tough to pressure Lonnie Randolph with his quickness. Against Colorado State, Drake in that game started out 0 for 10. Today they are 0 for 6. Finally, they're on the board. Well, they're a young team, and both these teams are playing nervous here in their first Valley game, and certainly both coaches understand the importance of winning their first conference game. Certainly, Drake's got to protect their home court. Southern already has two big wins on the road at Wyoming, at Wisconsin-Milwaukee, so they're tested on the road already, looking to get their first conference win. Full court pressure, and now the uh, true freshman, Tatum, will have some help here with Brooks. Saluki's lead it. And the score, 4-2, just underway. Tatum with the basketball, man-to-man -man shown here by Drake. Now they match it up a little differently. Turner, cross-court pass, trying to find that skip pass against the zone. Under 10 on the shot clock. Tatum, the freshman, trying to get help. Here's Corn, we're down to three on the shot clock. Brooks, can he get it away? He will. It doesn't fall. A whistle underneath. That's going to go against Corn. That was a good defensive set that time by Drake. They made Southern use 35 seconds, forced Brooks into a very difficult shot, and then most importantly, they put a body on somebody, boxed out, and got the foul call. Marcin Kunerzewski from St. Catharines, Ontario, a 6'8 freshman, checks in for Drake. And Lamar Owen checks in for Southern Illinois. traditional flex offense that Tom Davis has been running for 35 years. Kuderzewski lost it. Here's Brooks in the front court. 6-4, 7 Illinois. Randolph lost the handle. And a foul against Owen of Southern Illinois. Dan Drake's got four turnovers in the first 
four and a half minutes of this ball game, they have to do a better job taking care of that ball. We talked about Darren Brooks. He can be a factor this year in the Valley. To Southern Illinois. Southern Illinois with a lead of four. Don't miss a minute of the 2004 State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Men's Basketball Tournament. It's Arch Madness, March 5th through the 8th at the Savage Center in downtown St. Louis. It's the place to be for some great Valley action. Get your tickets for that tournament at this number, 314-241-1888 today. 314-241-1888. Tom Davis, first conference game in the Valley. For all those years at Iowa and various schools, Boston College, Lafayette, Stanford, and now in the Missouri Valley Conference. The miss pulled away by Southern Illinois. They lead it 6-2. to two. Scott Highmark alongside. My name is Dan McLaughlin. Great to have you with us for the NBC Game of the Week. <laughs> Trying to get that pass inside to Josh Warren, the junior from Washington, Missouri. This is Josh Powell. Drake a little sloppy with the basketball, and really, Scotty, both teams pretty sloppy in the onset. Well, they really are, but credit Southern Illinois. Look how far out Drake's having to start their offense. They really want to play around the free throw line, but Southern's doing a good job pressuring them out 25, 30 feet from the feet is where they're, from the basket is where they're starting their offense. Robinson lost the handle. We're down to seven. Check it eight on the shot clock, and that will go against Southern Illinois. Well, Southern Illinois, again, doing a great job pressuring the ball. Jamal Tatum, the best on-the-ball defender for Southern Illinois. And you see they try to get out there and deny that wing, but Drake can't even start their offense because of the ball pressure Southern's putting on them. Four on the shot clock. Murphy lets it go. No good. They are 0 for 7 from the field so far. 0 for 7. And that's a little bit what you're talking about, just not getting good looks. Yeah, it's tough to get it done. It, against any team, much less a very good Southern Illinois team, and you can't knock it down, but really the ball handling's been the biggest culprit. Powell, a good look underneath. Rebound by Warren in Southern Illinois. Tatum gets it back now to Warren, out of the key. Just over 14 minutes to play in our first half. Here's Darren Brooks from the baseline, and he got it. That's a three-pointer. And Southern Illinois on the road has opened up a 9-2 lead. If you're going to play a zone, you better find Darren Brooks. He's the guy that leads the team in scoring, one of the best players in the Valley. You can't forget about number one. And again, Drake not able to penetrate at all and get into any kind of offensive set just to get some decent looks. Well, Warren sagging there in the lane. It's really hard to get anything going in the lane when he's not out there even guarding Josh Powell. And Powell says, you know what, I've got to at least put that element out there that I can shoot it. Yeah, but what I'd like to see him do is take two steps in. He shot it from about 18 feet, could have take two steps in as we see the youngster from Jefferson City, Jamal Tatum, knocking it down. Jamal Tatum, the career uh, scoring leader at Elias High School out of Jefferson City. He was a McDonald's All-American nominee. Remember that name. He's going to be a force in the valley. And a timeout taken by Drake, and we're going to see wholesale substitutions on both sides, and I'm sure that uh, Southern Illinois has to be happy with this start. They lead it by 10 on the road in their first conference game of the season. Southern Illinois coming off their second straight NCAA appearance. Both times they've been at-large qualifiers, and last season, for Southern Illinois, it was a one-point loss to Missouri, and we talked about what they did the year before. Got to the Sweet 16. 52 and 15 the last two years. And you talk about that loss to Missouri, a lot of people would argue Jermaine Dearman was called for a charge on the last play of the ball game. They called that a block, and maybe they advance to the next round in the NCAA tournament. It's amazing what Bruce Weber and now Matt Painter have been able to do with this program. Jermaine Dearman, by the way, playing professionally overseas in Germany. And Ken Williams, if you're wondering about him, he's in the NBA Developmental League. Roland Roberts is there, too. You're talking about 40% of last year's offense, and that's what's amazing is how quickly this Southern Illinois team has gelled and found ways to replace those two young men. You're not going to replace them. And what Matt Painter has said is, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to be better on the defensive end. There's not as much room for error because we can always go to Ken and get a basket or get it to Jermaine down low. Randolph trying to dribble through a double team. We are down to six on the shot clock, and it's going to stay with the Bulldogs. And is Southern Illinois getting after the Drake guards? 
getting up into him, being real physical, and it starts with number three, Jamal Tatum, really making it tough for Lonnie Randolph, even to catch the ball. Six on the shot clock. Three from the baseline, and they got it to fall. That's Nick Ritchie, a 6'2 junior from Indiana. That's what he can do, and certainly the Bulldogs needed that to get off the snide. He hit four of five, Ritchie did, in a loss to Iowa. He is a walk-on player for Dr. Tom Davis. The zone is shown by Drake. This is Walker, pulls it back, looking for help, and a travel on Walker. Let's go back to Nate Ritchie with just a couple of ticks left on that shot clock. Well, Ritchie does a good job moving without the basketball. You see Southern late recovering, and that's what he can do. And the substitution patterns of Tom Davis, he's going to go with whoever's hot. He said we've got 11 players, as you see the steal by Tatum going into the layup. Good steal by Jamal Tatum. Davis says we've got 11 players, and we re-rank the players almost daily. And he said there's very little difference between our number one and number 11 players, and that changes daily depending on their performance. So he said we don't have a superstar. We're going to go with the guys that are playing well, but because of the style that we play and the up-tempo style that they play, we're going to have to play a lot of guys. Down to 15 on the shot clock for Drake. Brooks is driving, kicks it to an open. Lonnie Randolph, no good. Loose ball underneath, Drake comes up with it. That's Sean Brooks, a 6-2 sophomore from San Antonio, Texas. Southern Illinois with a lead of 14-7. On the road at Drake. The zone again shown by Drake. Primarily, they'll play that zone. From the baseline, a miss by Walker. Drake pulls away the rebound, and a foul against Southern Illinois. Well, Southern's getting great shots on the offensive end. They've actually done a very good job offensively, just can't get it to go down that time, but they're getting any shot they want. As Scott told you, you're going to hear a lot from this youngster, a freshman, Jamal Tatum, 14-7, Salukis. 14-7, Southern Illinois with a lead on the road at Drake. Today's Prairie Farms Missouri Valley Conference Scholar Athlete is Southern Illinois' Noah Beitler, hailing from Israel. Beitler finished sixth in the 2003 Valley Women's Cross Country Championship. She carries a 3.8 GPA in industrial design. Academics so important to the Missouri Valley Conference, so let's salute Noah Beitler. Today's Prairie Farms Missouri Valley Conference Scholar Athlete. Scott Highmark, Dan McLaughlin, Missouri Valley Conference, Game of the Week presented by State Farm. Lonnie Randolph with the basketball for Drake. This is Nick Grant. He loses the basketball, and then a turnover, and Southern has been doing that all day. Yeah, they really have had a hard time keeping a handle on the ball. That time, they don't spot the shooter in the corner. Kept alive underneath. This is Corn, and he'll go to the line and shoot, too. And Southern's doing a good job pressuring the ball, and we've documented that. But a lot of these turnovers, they have eight turnovers now, or unforced turnovers. Drake, just careless with the basketball. And I'm sure Dr. Tom Davis is not used to that, given the level of players that he's had over the year and years. And he certainly won't see that as acceptable. Corn is a fifth-year senior, averaging 10. And for the first time in his career, he's getting a chance to start for the Salukis. He's a fantastic shooter. You see six foot nine, but one of the best pure shooters on this team. You see the beautiful rotation. Really can stroke it. Part of the NBC All Bench team last year. Has five threes on the season. That's tied for most on the team for Southern Illinois. And again, the good pressure from the Salukis. Nick Grant with the basketball popping out now. It's David Bancroft. Good look underneath, but a whistle and an offensive foul against the Bulldogs. Again, the rotation. Your senior, Sylvester Willis, that's what you expect fifth-year seniors to do. Slide over on the rotation. You see Southern doing a good job, again, pressuring the basketball. But once Drake beats their man off the dribble, look at Sly sliding over, stepping up, draws the charge. Ryan Walker, a freshman, will have a seat. And back in, it's Darren Brooks. Hairston cutting to the middle. It's the basketball. Leads it up to Darren Brooks. Boy, look at that explosion. To the glass. Offensive foul. Boy, that was a pretty play, though. Just shows you how smooth and fluid Darren Brooks is. They do a great job getting the ball to the middle, distributing it from there. A little hesitation move. Gets almost all the way to the basket. Nice job by Drake rotating over. But you see the ball in the middle. That's what you have to do against that pressure. St Stetson Hairston kicks it ahead to Darren Brooks, and Matt Painter can live with that mistake. 
16 to 7, Southern Illinois with a lead. First personal foul against Darren Brooks, the junior from Jennings High School in St. Louis. Randolph has really struggled against this pressure. He really has, and he's got to find, I think he's over dribbling a little bit. He's got to pass, move the ball with a pass, not by the dribble. Nick Grant inside the arc, no good. And it's pulled away by Southern Illinois. Brian Turner with the rebound. Hairston in the front court, spinning. He'll pull it back. Turner, open look for three. No good, and it's pulled away by Corbin. I'm sure a lot of our fans along the valley know that name. Clayton Corver is the brother of Kyle Corver, now playing for the 76ers. And Kyle, of course, was the player of the year last season out of Creighton. Well, his brother Clayton there, you see the resemblance from Pella, Iowa. He's worked himself into the rotation, actually started in their last ball game. Again, a great shooter, as you might expect. Started versus Western Illinois. They won two state championships in 3A here at Pella, Iowa. So another winner in the Corver family. Averaging six a game, a couple of rebounds. Clayton Korber, Randolph at the line. Today, by the way, the fifth different starting lineup used by Dr. Tom Davis. And how many games have they played? I think this is fun. <laughs> he said, we might have 29 different starting lineups. He goes, I have no idea. Nobody's distinguishing themselves yet. Oh, Randolph really struggling. But it stays with Drake. Again, you see him, he's trying to split the defense off the dribble, pass the basketball, reverse it. They double. They're going to double anytime there's a ball screen. They talked about a shoot around. Southern's going to jump out and double that. You can't dribble through it. Pass the basketball, reverse it. That's how you get good shots. Robinson gets it blocked. And that will be a foul against the Bulldogs. Joshua Robinson. 9.39 to go in our first half. Well, in order for Drake to be successful, Dan, they're going to have to get some points off of their pressure. They're averaging 14 steals and 17 turnovers a game. We've already seen how much they struggle on the offensive end. They've got to get some easy buckets off of their pressure. Helping out Josh Warren. Corn looking for help, and he has it. This is Turner. They break the pressure. Corn. Brooks, open look, yes, he'll hit that all day. Darren Brooks averaging 17 points, tops on the team at seven rebounds. That's also tops in that category. Well, again, that time Drake lost number one, but great ball reversal and ball movement that time by Southern, but that's too easy if you're Drake. A wild shot from Robinson and a foul against Robinson. 19 to seven, Southern Illinois with the lead. Tom Davis wants his teams to play fast, but as John Wooden said, be quick, but don't hurry. When you get on the offensive end, they want to play fast on the defensive end. When you get on the offensive end, you've got to be patient. You're not good enough to make one pass go one-on-one -on -one and try to make a play. You've got to wear the defense down a little bit. Tatum with the basketball. Darren Brooks finding court. Fake corn to the goal and slams it down. Well, you got to honor the shot. You know how well he can shoot it, so you got to go out there. That time he puts it on the floor, goes by everybody, and finishes. You'll see a lot of that from Brad Corn. Here's Randolph, and Corn is going to be whistled for the foul underneath. Going to the line, it'll be Josh Powell, the sophomore from Des Moines. How about the pump fake to set up the dunk for Gordon? Well, you got to respect the jump shot, so they get out there, they contest it. He goes by everybody. No Drake Bulldogs rotate over, and Corn with the flush. Nobody there for Corn going to the basket, all created by the threat of the three-point shot. Southern Illinois is 8 for 17 from the field. Meanwhile, Drake is 2 of 16 here at home. And I don't remember very many even good looks at the basket. Again, their offense is starting so far out. Southern doing such a good job. But Lonnie Randolph's got to settle down this team. He's the one that started 40 career games. He's playing with a lot of youngsters that don't have the experience, not used to playing against the pressure. The onus is on him to run this ball for him. Four of the nine points have been scored from the free throw line for Drake. Southern easily breaks the pressure. Here's Tatum. Now to Darren Brooks. Brooks leads all scores with eight. Tatum. 
You've got to recognize the shooters. When you're Drake and you're back in the zone, you cannot lose Darren Brooks. You cannot lose Jamal Tatum. You've got to make sure you know where they are. Turner, the miss. Ford trying to put it back up, and then he can't. Pulled away by Lonnie Randall. Good pass. This is Sean Brooks. Driven. And a foul against Southern Illinois. We've seen him do that four or five times here in the first half. Well, and Southern knows that Lonnie Randolph doesn't want to give it up, and so they're kind of coming from behind and back checking him as well. Darren Brooks leading all scores with eight inside and the outside game. 21 9 Southern Illinois. Well, Matt Painter certainly thinks that Darren Brooks is one of the top five players in the Missouri Valley Conference, and we're seeing why here early. One of the things I love about him, he lets the game come to him, Dan. Wide open shot off of the rotation against the zone, going right by the man, just so fluid going to the basket. We know he can shoot the basketball, but he also does a great job getting to the basket. I asked Matt Painter, I said, describe his game, and he said, old school. That's the only way I can describe it. So fluid so effortless not the best athlete that you're going to see in the missouri valley conference eight points three rebounds here early and he just lets the game come to him drake by the way two of 17 from the field to start this game they trail at home 21 9 this is our valley game of the week brought to you by state farm here's one back to tom davis thought it was a travel didn't get the call inside to warren They'll go the line and shoot a couple. Let's take a look at the NBC basketball standings brought to you by Edward Jones. More than 130 years of experience helping individuals build financial security. Edward Jones, Southern Illinois, off to a very good start at 4-0. Creighton, 3-0, and we expect that. SMS had a win last night over Coppin State. They're 4-2. Well, we use the word parity in college basketball a lot, but I would say the Valley's been top-heavy the last couple of years with Southern Illinois and Creighton. But if you look at the teams this year, certainly Southern and Creighton are going to be part of it. But at Bradley, you got just about everybody back. Wichita State was favored to win the league, and Barry Henson doing a great job down at SMS as well. Warren knocks them both down. Turner will have a seat. And Tony Young, a freshman, getting his first minutes this afternoon. Twenty-three to nine, Southern Illinois. This is Randolph in the lane. And a two-shot foul coming. Here at the Nap Center, Drake overall is 76 and 69. But Southern Illinois has dominated the meeting between these two teams. The Salukis have won 22 of the last 26 games between Drake and the Salukis. Well, as good as Southern was last year, they blew them out in Carbondale. But when Drake came here to the Knapp Center, it was a one-point ball game, and Drake thought they should have won that ball game. So anytime you go on the road, it's difficult. I don't care at what level, but certainly in the Missouri Valley Conference, it's always difficult to go on the road. So. Matt Painter's got to be ecstatic with the start that his team has here today in their first road game in the Valley. Randolph with his first two points. Full court pressure by Drake. This is Jamal Tatum in the front court. He'll try a three. Freshman off the mark. Young trying to pull it away. Keeps it alive to Brooks. I just love Darren Brooks. He could have shot that ball kind of... Kind of open, probably could have shot it. You know, he's the leading scorer, but he just draws it back, says, let's work some clock. We're going to get that same shot after we work 20, 25 seconds, if not a better one. Here's Willis underneath, lost the handle. And Drake steps out of bounds. That was Nate Ritchie. But Drake's 11 points in this game this afternoon. Six are from the free throw line. The last four points, by the way, have been from the free throw line. Brooks will inbound for Southern Illinois and a fresh 35 for the Salukis. 
6.23 remaining in our first half. And a good look at Dr. Tom Davis. Former head coach at Iowa for 13 seasons. Their all-time winningest head coach. Well, he coached some great players at Iowa. I remember players like Kevin Gamble and Roy Marble, who used to call him Baby Jordan. Didn't quite materialize for him, but what a great player. Jeff Moe back in the mid-'80s. Andre Woolridge, Dean Oliver. He had some great point guards, really known for his great point guards there in Iowa City. And he walked into a situation where he thought he was going to have Luke McDonald, who was a preseason all-conference pick. And all of a sudden, McDonald came up with a few injuries and said, I've had enough. Well, he had more than a few injuries. He had career-threatening injuries to his ankles, had bone spurs, had a leg injury that he wasn't sure was going to heal as the shot clock runs down. Tatum makes a play. Tangled up underneath a couple of players. And that ball will go to Drake. It was Corver and Willis that were tied up. You see the shot clock running down, and that's what Jamal Tatum can do. Not a bad shot for the fact that he had the ball 30 feet from the basket with four seconds to go. Gets it up on the rim, and that's what you want players to do, and certainly the freshman has been able to do that. Well, you talk about McDonald. That was a huge loss. He averaged 13 and a half points per game last year playing hurt and just made a decision that, A, physically he wasn't sure if he was going to be able to do it, and he had also some religious reasons as Corver knocks down the three from the corner, sets up their pressure. Near steal for Drake flying over to the bench is Dietzy, the 6'8 sophomore for Drake. They easily, though, break the pressure young of the two. He had five on four. Great recognition that time by Southern to attack. Lonnie Randolph looking underneath. Thought about the three. Open man is Randolph and gets it blocked. Comes back to Drake. Popping out Robinson. 4-3. And Tatum pulls it away. Just over five minutes to play in our first half. 25-14 Southern Illinois. And a steal that's pulled away by Nick Grant. Grant out of control a bit. Offensive foul. Nick Grant whistled for the offensive foul. Out of control was the right description, Dan. Once Drake breaks that pressure, they've got to just pull it out. They, they can't attack. They didn't have numbers. Just a poor decision that time. Lamar Owen doing a great job stepping up. Conversely, let's look at Southern and the way they handle their pressure. They get the ball in the middle, Dan, and they attack. And they make good decisions once they get in the middle. You see Darren Brooks, again, doing it all. Sees, knows that there's a man down for Drake on the other end who went for the steal and makes the great delivery. Great recognition that time. Another turnover, and it's back to Drake. Great hustle from Lonnie Randolph to keep it alive with the steal. He leads his team in assist and steals, and as you mentioned, a starter in now 65 games in his career, including today. Well, as poorly as Drake has played here in the first half, and particularly handling the ball down 11, Dan, if he can get the lead, eight, even keep it around 10 going into the half, I think Tom Davis feels like they're still in the ball game. A couple of steals on the last two possessions for the Salukis, and Drake. Offensive foul against Randolph. I was about to say, Drake leads the NBC's uh, steal department with 15 a game. So just extending the arm just a little bit there. The fans here in Des Moines don't like that, nor does Lonnie Randolph. Nor does Tom Davis. 4.34 to go. 25-14. Formal inbound against Corver. And Hairston has it. He pulls it back wisely, and he'll set the offense for Southern Illinois. Zone shown by Drake. Fifteen on the shot clock. Hairston to Turner for three. The put back up and in by Darren Brooks. Did I say he's versatile? I think we've seen just about everything. We've seen jumpers. We've seen drives to the basket. We've seen him handle the ball in the middle of a break. And now we see him with a tip in on the offensive glass. He is four of nine from the field and has ten points. Only player in double figures. Ten on the shot. 
shot clock. Deep three from Brooks. The other Brooks, Darren, pulls it away for Southern Illinois. Hairston in the front court. Salukis leading with under three and a half to play in our first half, 27-14. Southern Illinois very patient right now on offense. Well, watch how many times they reverse the basketball against the zone. That time they try to set a screen to free up corn on the on the weak side. An illegal screen called there that time, but good idea that time. Personal fouls on corn. The fifth year senior from Southern Illinois. It's 27-14. Season's hottest styles. Aeropost Dow provides the hottest athletically inspired clothes for guys and girls. For store locations, visit their website at aeropostal.com. That's A E R O P O S T A L E.com. Aeropost Dow, proud sponsor of the Missouri Valley Conference. Drake's last three shots have been three point attempts. They are shooting just 27% three-point range this season. Murphy was elevating to slam that down. Well, the best athlete on the Drake ball club, but can't get it to go down, and that's a little bit of a deflator. for three and the freshman knocks it down from the right wing. Again, Matt Painter making a good substitution. The zone buster, Ryan Walker, you better spot where he is when he's in the ball game. He's in the game for that one reason. Find open shots against the zone. The freshman from Galesburg, Illinois, Ryan Walker, his father played at Wake Forest. Losing the handle with Sean Brooks. And a travel. Well, the Valley takes its TV cameras around the conference. These properties serve as the league's home away from home. Please visit the website or we'll call these properties when following your favorite Valley team on the road. And down on the floor here at the Knapp Center is Drake's Sean Brooks collided with an opposing player. He was down on the floor and Dr. Tom Davis, the head coach, is out there along with the trainer for the Drake Bulldogs. As he ran into a Brian Turner of Southern Illinois. Been a tough shooting afternoon for Drake. They are three of 23. And just two of 11 from three point territory. Well, I think field goal percentage is A, a function of shot selection, but also how you handle the basketball. And I don't think they've done a very good job on either end. Certainly not handling the basketball well, have the 12 turnovers, but they're not making good decisions once they do beat the pressure of Southern as well. I want to remind you our next televised game along the uh, NBC television network. You and I against Illinois State, Saturday, December 20th, noon central. We'll tip it off. You and I and Illinois State. A whistle underneath. That's going to go against Lamar Owen, junior from Owensboro, Kentucky. We haven't talked a lot about Lamar Owen, but he certainly provides a lot of energy. Matt Painter very excited about Lamar Owen, a, a six foot five, 195 pound athlete that can really play that four spot, solidify it. And he said he's a tireless worker. He said, I can make him run all day long and he never gets tired. He goes, I love guys like that. He's got a soccer background. He was actually Mr. Sto soccer in the uh, state of Kentucky. Mr. Soccer? How about, I didn't know they had Mr. Soccer. I hear about Mr. Basketball. Mr. Soccer. They have Mr. Soccer. You're looking at him right there. Junior college transfer from Southeastern Illinois College, which is one of the top programs in the uh, JUCO ranks. They finished in the top five last year. It's not going to be a, an easy task taking over for Bruce Weber. Bruce Weber went 24 and 7 last year, won the conference for the second straight year, regular season, led this team to the NCAA tournament for the second consecutive year, and was the MVC coach of the year. So there's some uh, pretty lofty expectations here on Matt Painter. That's a good look underneath. 
Well, the people of Carbondale certainly expecting Matt Painter to continue the same tradition that Bruce Weber did over his five years here. And, and why that wouldn't happen, I don't know, because nothing really has changed fundamentally in what they're trying to do. Matt Painter well steeped in the Gene Cady, Bruce Weber disciplines of basketball. And as long as they can keep recruiting as they have, there's no reason the Saluki shouldn't continue to be at the top of the valley. We're down to 10 on the shot clock. Just over a minute to play. It's hit out of bounds, and there's four seconds left on the shot clock. We've got to get a quick hitter this time. Look for Jamal Tatum maybe coming back to the basketball. He's the one guy here, Darren Brooks, that can get a shot up in a very short period of time. Turner's going to inbound. He does. It's to Willis. Willis, pretty good look from the baseline. Yes. Or you can just get it to your power forward and tell him to make a play. The senior, Sylvester Willis, had his first ever double-double against Simo. In their last win, those great answers. Randolph answers with two, almost picks up a steal. And Randolph does pick up a foul. But you can feel the pressure starting to hurt Southern Illinois. That's the way it works with Tom Davis. They may not get steals every time, but over the course of a 40-minute ball game, it wears you out. He keeps running waves of players at you. And you're going to go through stretches like this, like Southern Illinois has. They're letting Drake make a little bit of a run, a little bit sloppy ball handling. And, and you're going to have that sometime when you have young freshmen handling the ball against that type of pressure. Tatum is at the line. Tatum, you may have heard this if you're a huge basketball fan. The St. Louis Eagles, an AAU program out of the city of St. Louis, won the prestigious Nike tournament. He was part of that and was really highly recruited at one point, but then some teams kind of backed off, but the Saluki stayed on, and I think they got quite a fine in Jamal Tatum. Well, Matt Painter's done a great job recruiting that St. Louis metropolitan area. Six of the 13 scholarship players played for the St. Louis Eagles AAU program, and Matt's done a great job infiltrating St. Louis, making his presence known, along with Bruce Weber and the tradition that he set. And Matt was the top recruit for Bruce Weber. Top assistant, Randolph into a double team, looking for help, he can't find it. And again, it's a turnover against Drake. Southern Illinois will have it. Shot clock is off. And we are just over 20 seconds to play in our first half. They lead it 34 to 18. Tatum with the basketball. 10 seconds to go first half. Tatum. It's a pick inside the arc. Good looking shot. Rattles in and out. No good. Pulled away by Drake. The rebound went to Kuniski. And then Randolph just lets the time run out. So Drake at home, trailing in Dr. Tom Davis's conference opener in the Missouri Valley Conference. 34 to 18, Southern Illinois with the lead. Darren Brooks of the Salukis led all scores with 10 points. Saluki's really shot well. They were 12 of 31, but uh, the big story, Drake is just 4 of 24 from the field. We are at the half of the uh, Missouri Valley Conference Game of the Week presented by State Farm. 34-18, Southern Illinois with the lead. Most of the conference defending champions as far as regular season play goes. Let's check in with Coach Dr. Tom Davis and get his Mercy Health plans for the second half. Let's get it. Coach, Coach, you struggled a little bit offensively, only 18 points. What can you do in the second half to remedy that? Well, I think Southern LA is good. There's no question about that. But I must have watched a different rules and turf meeting on what a hand check is because we can't get anything run. They're just driving us out of the offense. So we've got to be a little stronger with the ball, fight through the contact that's being allowed, and go according to the way the game is being called. But Southern Illinois is good. You can't detract from that. Last five minutes, I thought your pressure started to hurt them. You're going to keep with that in the second yeah, half? You don't have any choice. You know, we need some easy baskets. We've got to try to generate some easy baskets. Now, if Brooks is hurt, that'll uh, that'll hurt us second half because I need him to play backup point and backup guard. Coach, good luck to you in the second right, half. Okay, Dan, let's go back to you. Mercy Health Plans, providing innovative health coverage that empowers members to take responsibility for their health. Visit MercyHealthPlans.com.
Our thanks to Dr. Tom Davis, the head coach of the Drake Bulldogs, and to Scott Highmark. 34-18, we're at the half. The State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Game of the Week is brought to you by Budweiser. Grab a cold, fresh Budweiser. It's game time. By Edward Jones. More than 130 years of experience helping individuals build financial security. By ConAgra Foods. We set America's table at home and away. By Jeep. Your legendary 2004 Jeep 4x4 is at your Jeep dealer during the year-end sales drive. So come in and see how good the best values in America can be. And by Purina Dog Chow. Incredible dog food. Incredible dogs. 34-18 with Drake trailing at the half. For Dr. Tom Davis, this is conference game number 404 in his career. He also coached in the East Coast Conference at Lafayette, the Eastern Collegiate Athletic Conference, the Big East at Boston College, the Pac-10 at Stanford, the Big Ten at Iowa. So he is no stranger to conference games, but in game number 404 in his conference games, he's trailing. And uh, for Matt Painter, first ever time as a head coach in conference play. And here he has a lead of 34-18. Well, Coach Painter's got to be very happy with the way they came out, especially on the defensive end. Wasn't real happy with the eight turnovers there in the first half, but that thought, he thought they really got after the ball, pressured Lonnie Randolph into making some poor decisions. Southern Illinois had 10 steals. 10 steals in that first half to just four for Drake. And uh, Darren Brooks has already tied a school record for steals in a game with six for Southern Illinois. He's on his way to a triple-double. Got 10 points already, five rebounds, and six steals. Mm. So Lukey's with the basketball just underway in the second half. NBC Game of the Week presented by State Farm. Willis is underneath. Can't get it to fall, and it's pulled down by Josh Pyle. The 6-7 sophomore from Des Moines. Really important that Drake makes good decisions offensively here early in the second half. Needless to say, the first five minutes are going to be extremely important, but Dr. Tom Davis wants to make sure that they get good offensive possessions each and every time, of course, valuing the basketball. Quickly now, Stetson Hairston. It's his third personal, so he has to uh, take a seat. And Jamal Tatum, the freshman, is back in for the Salukis. Well, what a luxury co coming with a guy like Jamal Tatum that brings that type of quickness. But for Southern Illinois to be as good as they can be, they need a guy like Stetson Hairston to play 30, 35 minutes. Southern Illinois was picked to finish fifth in the preseason poll. The Drake Bulldogs preseason pick at number nine. Good inbounds play. And an easy two for Joshua Robinson. Robinson has four points. Well, Matt Painter wouldn't say it, I'm sure, publicly, but I, I think in the back of his mind, he was thinking, I think we can be a little bit better than fifth this year in the Valley. Brooks underneath, and the easy two, 12 points for Darren Brooks. Brooks with those 12, leads all scores. He's the only player in double figures. Here's Grant inside, leaning in, couldn't get it to go. Pulled down by Corn, no travel call, and the fans wanted it. I wouldn't disagree. Well, usually if you go to the floor with the ball, they do call it traveling. Tatum looking inside to Sylvester Willis. Willis goes baseline. Look at that move from Sylvester Willis. Well, not cutting off the baseline, compounded by no weak side help by the Bulldogs. Sylvester so Willis is an interesting story. He stands at six foot seven, but as a freshman in high school, he was five six. That's over a foot. <laughs> that is amazing, and he may be one of the best athletes in the Missouri Valley Conference. They don't rely on him to score a lot, but every once in a while, he'll step out, use his quickness, go baseline. At only six foot five, he's put together well at 225 pounds and just explodes to the basket that time for the Salukis. Look at him posting up strong, getting good position, facing up. He's not a threat to knock down that jump shot. If you're Drake, give him a few steps. Make him knock down that 10, 12 footer. Willis made 36 consecutive starts for the Salukis. He has the basketball. Looks for help, almost threw it away. Look at Brooks. Is that nice pretty? Move. That is so pretty. My goodness, he has not forced. Let's count and see if he forces one shot in this ball game. Usually when you've got your leading score, they're forcing shots at least three or four a game. He has not forced one thing here today. Here's Robinson inside. Strong move. Couldn't get it to go. Pulled away by Brooks. Corn in the front court. To the goal. Lays it up. No good. The put back by Tatum is no good. 
And a foul underneath, that's going to go against Korn, and that's not a smart foul. And that'll be his third personal. I'm going to take a look at Darren Brooks on the previous possession. Watch how pretty this is. Again, good job by Southern, breaking the pressure. Little ball fake, couple dribbles, splits the defense, no charge, and lays it up. Makes it look so easy, but that's very, very difficult. Darren Brooks, not the best athlete, can't even dunk the basketball, Dan. It's six foot three, can't even dunk it, but he's just so clever, so old school. Matt Painter says he looks like some guy that you watch in black and white in 1960s, but just gets it done. He's six of 12 on the day, 14 points. And that's a foul, that's going to go against Korn. That's now four personal now on Brad Korn. That's a big foul. Well, and that's one thing that could really hurt the Southern team. They are not very deep at the four and five spots. They've got four guys that they can play, none of which really do a lot of damage down on the low post, but they are not very deep, not very big at the four and five spot. Lamar Owen back in the game. The junior college transfer. Matt Painter talking with Brad Corny saying foul number three was a mistake, the one that was so far down away from the basket. His presence out of that lineup. Drake gets a chance on a rebound and they hit the three. Nate Ritchie, a walk on. And Drake all of a sudden turns it up a notch or two and it's 40 to 23. Now, Painter says, I've seen enough of that. Let's get a timeout, circle the wagons, and we'll come back, address that full court pressure. 17, 16 to go. Southern Illinois with a lead of 15 with 17, 16 to play. Be sure and join us for the 2004 State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Women's Basketball Tournament, March 11th through the 13th in Springfield, Missouri. Hoops in the heartland from the Hammond Student Center. The 2004 State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Women's Basketball Tournament. Don't miss a minute. 417-836-7678 for tickets. Rackhorn with four fouls, the fifth-year senior. will be watching most of the second half. You wonder if that could be a key if Drake gets back in the game. Well, they've got to get some stops on this end of the floor. Southern's been pretty free-flowing on the offensive end, getting pretty much any shot that they want here thus far. Here's Owen. 15-footer, no good. Brooks, a strong rebound. How about that? Your two-guard goes in and snatches an offensive rebound. Tatum from the wing, no good. And a rebound for David Bancroft, the junior from Marshfield, Missouri. Here's Randolph looking inside and throws it away. Guess who got that steal, Darren Brooks. They walked through that play and shoot around about four times and said, guys, it's gonna look like a shot, and it's gonna be an alley-oop play. Owen Travis shuffled his feet, bobbled the basketball a little bit and couldn't hold on. Scott Highmark alongside, Dan McLaughlin with you. And that has been the story right there, Darren Brooks. They had 26 points in their road victory at Wisconsin-Milwaukee. And, and they were really glad to play that game against Wisconsin-Milwaukee. They're coached by Bruce Pearl, a disciple of Tom Davis, as you see the shot from the corner. They play the exact same style as Drake does because Bruce Pearl coached under Tom Davis. So Wisconsin-Milwaukee, a, a team that's played in the NCAA tournament two of the last three years, Southern had the opportunity to go play them on the road, play against the same system, and got a W. That, along, excuse me, Dan, along with their win at Wyoming, the coaches of Southern Illinois believe that that has postseason implications. When you get two quality non-conference wins on the road, NIT, NCAA, they look at that. 40-25 with 15, 59 to go. Success is what uh, really defines this team, Southern Illinois. Only seven Division I teams have won more games than Southern in the last couple of seasons. 52 for the Salukis. Let's check around the league with the Ameren UE Valley scores and schedule. Ameren UE, Missouri's largest electric utility provider. And some of the scores there. Creighton a winner over Delaware State. Butler and Evansville went down to the wire. Furman and UNI. And a little later, you see some of the uh, Valley teams will be in action tonight. Ameren UE with our schedule and scores. 
Saw Steve Murfield there at Evansville almost upset Butler. Butler went to the Sweet 16 last year. Another very solid team in the Horizon League. So Steve Murfield's really getting that Evansville team and program back to the level that they're accustomed to. Here's Jamal Tatum. Tough pass handled easily by Brooks. Looking inside, kicks it to Tatum. Kick it right side. This is Turner. Good ball reversal. Brooks, open look. Drake gets the rebound. One to run, they're out of control. That's a travel back to Southern Illinois. Well, that was a great offensive possession that time by Southern. They moved the ball, made six or seven passes, reversed it. Brooks got the wide open looking shot. And Matt Painter has these boys well schooled here early in the season. I thought Sylvester Willis had one of the great quotes in college basketball in the preseason, talking about the difference between Bruce Weber and Matt Painter and their roles and relationship over the last few years. He said, Coach Weber was the sock puppet, but Matt Painter was the hand. And if you ever went to any of their practices, Matt Painter did almost all of their scouting and walking through the opposition and what they did. Just a great tactician. And I know Bruce Weber relied heavily on Matt Painter as Brian Turner knocks down the three-pointer. And I don't know that any young coach was more prepared to take a job at the Division I level than Matt Painter. Brian Turner with that three. He shot 44% from three last year. It was over 50% in conference play. That's a good look underneath for Drake. Quantel Murphy, the 6'4 sophomore. Drake, by the way, is equal to its total number of baskets from the first half at this juncture here in the second. Well, they need to get Quantel Murphy a little more involved offensively. He's a fantastic athlete, hasn't had a whole lot of touches in this ball game, but they've got to find a way to get him involved. Turner forced that shot. Sean Brooks pulls it away. Corver, D3. Boy, he's got a nice look at stroke, as you would expect. Another turnover. Here's Brooks leading the charge. Well, that's nice there. <laughs> Is that pretty or what? Under control, avoids the charge, and still has the balance to lay it in soft off the glass. And, oh, by Brooks. the way, he made the steal as well. Darren Brooks with 16. That is a nap center record, by the way. Eight steals for Brooks and a new Carbondale record, too. For steals in a game. The three from the head of the key, Nick Grant, a freshman from Virginia. He's one of the top freshmen in the Valley. Another young man they need to get more involved was ranked a top 50 shooting guard coming out of high school. Very capable scorer. Tom Davis is very excited about the future of Nick Grant. 45-30. Substitutions coming on both sides. Tatum. Quick move. Gets it to Brooks. Takes his time. Finds Turner. Brooks gets it back. Looking inside for Warren. An offensive foul against Warren. We'll take a look at Brooks on the defensive end that time. Those long arms getting out in the passing lane and then Comes down under control. They had a three on one, makes a great decision. Look at him avoid the charge, hang in the air, and finish. It's almost like he's working in slow motion. I think that's what the great players really can do is they see things develop and they're not in a rush, yet they're quick enough to, to make things happen. Randolph forced a shot, but Drake picked it up underneath. And that will go against the Bulldogs, David Bancroft. Josh Warren with three personal fouls. So some of that size for the Salukis is on the bench with foul trouble. Corn with four. That's a foul underneath. That'll go with Brooks. Cobra got the steal off the inbound. Well, that pressure is starting to affect Southern. Again, it comes in waves, and they keep bringing guy, fresh bodies off the bench. So eventually, they're going to wear you down. You're going to make some mental mistakes. See that time, the quick hands by Corver, and then Brooks comes right back and almost picks up his ninth steal. Grant will inbound to Corver. Under 13 minutes to play in our second half. Carverdale, by the way, is equal to season high with 12 turnovers in this game. The lefty leaning in off the mark. Hairston pulls it away. 
is Brooks, the senior. Walker, good look. Wide open, Tatum, 4-3. And it's kept alive by Hairston in the lane. Gets his own rebound, but then a whistle and a foul. That will go against Lonnie Randolph. Randolph is third personal. You see the shot go up, and Southern Illinois doing a great job attacking the offensive glass. Hairston can't get the chippy, but goes after. It's amazing that Southern Illinois has been able to extend their lead to 15. Stetson Hairston's been a non-factor. Has the three personal fouls, hasn't scored in this ball game. Coming into the season, if you said that Stetson Hairston would not score in a ball game, I'm sure Matt Painter would say there's no way we'd be able to be competitive. Another foul, Quantel Murphy. Southern Illinois, you see Korn with four personal, then you've got Hairston and uh, Warren both with three, Owen and Brooks with two. So foul trouble could be a factor down the stretch in the final 10 minutes of this game. And not so much, though, on the other side for Drake because they do go 10-12 deep. They absolutely do. And Southern, that one of their Achilles heels, they really only go about eight deep. They might go nine as they did with Ryan Walker in a specific situation against his own, but really they're about eight deep. So foul trouble could be an issue for Matt Painter, but he's doing a good job rotating guys in and out, giving them blows, making sure they're conscious of their foul situation. Tatum whistled for that foul, his first personal. 47-30, Southern Illinois with a lead. This is Randolph. chance at a three-point play for Murphy. He is athletic. He absolutely is, and they created enough space. Again, they run that flex, but they created enough space like the matchup against Sylvester Willis, and that's what he's got to recognize. The onus is not on his players, but the onus is on Quantel Murphy to take advantage and get in the scoring column to pull this Drake Bulldog team back in the ballgame. Hairston now with four personal fouls. He'll have a seat. Back in the game, Lamar Owen. And to the line. Lewis Murphy, the sophomore from Denver, Colorado. Had 11 rebounds on Wednesday night against Western Illinois, shooting 53% from the field. Just needs to get more opportunities. And within Tom Davis' system, you ask, well, why doesn't coach give him opportunities? What they do, they run the flex offense. They run two or three sets. But really, they run a system, and whatever gives them the opportunity, whoever gets the opportunity, they're supposed to take advantage of it. So they're not going to run a whole lot of sets. Southern Illinois sends the lead to 14. Southern Illinois was trying to figure out with the loss of Jermaine Dearman, Kent Williams, where would the scoring come from? Well, today it's come from Darren Brooks. Well, he's been fantastic. He showed us the full arsenal, a little pump fake, going to the basket. It's hard to define exactly what Darren Brooks does because he does so many different things well. He shoots the jumper. He has a great mid-range game. We know defensively what he's done. You see the eight steals, one rebound, two steals away from a triple-double, and that third leg being the steals column, you don't usually see assists as that third leg of a triple-double, but he's well within reach of getting the Valley's first triple-double of the season. Only one assist on the day for Darren Brooks, but uh, all those steals. Well, they had the opportunity to go overseas to Europe and play a seven-game trip this summer, and after they got back, I talked to assistant coach Paul Lusk and Matt Painter as Southern gets the breakaway. And Owen couldn't finish. And when they got back from that trip, Dan, Matt Painter said, you will not believe how good Darren Brooks is. He's going to be one of the best players in the Valley. He elevated his game to an entirely different level. And meanwhile, I guess both these teams had an opportunity to take an off-season trip. Dr. Tom Davis took his team down to Cancun. Now, if, if you were the coach of the Division I team, you'd probably take them to Cancun instead of Europe, Cancun. wouldn't you? Yeah, Hawaii. Hawaii, yeah. There's got to be somebody to play over there. There's a lot of personal reasons for those trips. <laughs> feeling with the experience that Dr. Tom Davis has in this game of basketball, the level that he has coached at, and the really the legendary status that he has in the state of Iowa. He's going to be able to recruit to even a, a team like a Drake and, and get some of the higher end players. Absolutely, and they're going to make Iowa the core base of the kind of kids they're going to recruit. They've got great high school basketball here. They've got eight of their players are from the state of Iowa, and if they can make that the, really the base of their recruiting and spread out in some of the other metropolises, 
within you know, two, three, four hour drives, and Dr. Tom's going to get it done. It's just a matter of time. Well, the Salukis have seen their lead cut now to 47 35, and the crowd here at the Knapp Center comes alive a bit. Well, you can see the defensive energy picking up. It's amazing what happens when you make a few shots, when you start making a run offensively, what that does to your defensive intensity. Ten on the shot clock. Brooks leaning in. No good, and a foul underneath is Willis pulled down the rebound. Boy, that just kills you if you're Drake. You play great defense for 20 seconds. You get a missed shot, and you can't get that second chance opportunity away from Southern and Southern going to their go-to guy Darren Brooks but look at Willis fighting for rebounds that's what he's on this Southern Illinois team to do Willis to the line coming off his first ever double double the last win for Southern Illinois Randolph in the front court. That's a good look underneath Robinson. Off the glass, yes. And this lead has been cut down to 10. Saluki's with the numbers. Tatum inside. A foul against Drake. Look at the pressure. That's exactly where they want the ball to go, Dan. That first pass, they let you make the pass to the corner. They come out, they aggressively go after the ball that everybody else is a defensive back trying to go for. But that time, Turner does a nice job stepping through, splitting it. But Dr. Tom's got to be happy with the energy. Tatum, the freshman, with seven points on the afternoon. And free throws now a concern. Randolph wants to push. And a foul and a hard one underneath. And Robinson will go to the line and shoot two for Drake. And they're crawling back in this one. And this crowd has gotten alive. They absolutely are. Lonnie Randolph doing a great job pushing the ball. And you can just see the emotions and the countenance of the guys on Drake. Everybody's positive right now. And a few minutes ago, everybody had their shoulders down. And look at Lonnie Randolph doing what he does best, pushing the ball in transition. Foul off of uh, Brian Turner. And now it's down to single digits at home with 10.46 to play. That's the idea. Get it down to single digits and see what you can do there. You just chip away. You play from timeout to timeout, five-minute increments. And if you're Matt Painter, you got to think about, all right, we got some guys in foul trouble, but these players can make a difference for us. When do we get them back in the game? Absolutely. You've got guys like Stetson Harrison, who are veteran players that have played in NCAA tournament. If in doubt, you're making a run, I'm giving it to Darren Brooks. 20 points on the afternoon. He's 9 of 17. His eighth 20-point game in his career for Darren Brooks. Just over 10 minutes to play. Back to a 10-point lead. That's a jump stop right there, and that's also a travel. Yeah, that was just too much. Murphy just forcing the issue that time. Nothing was there, and... Took a little bit of an extra bounce there. You see the huge jump stop that took a little baby hop right before that. Good call by the officials. But great, you like the aggressiveness that they're showing on both ends of the floor. They get this chance to set up their pressure. Watch the trap on the first pass. Looking for help. Here's Willis, triple teamed, and a foul underneath. Boy, you hate to see him foul. You had him right where you wanted him. You had three guys. You had more than a double trap. You had a triple trap right underneath the basket and you just give a little bit too much energy and give the referee an opportunity to call a foul. Whistled on Nate Ritchie, his first. That's a ninth team foul. Nine team fouls aside in the second half. So 10.04 to play, and both teams are in that double bonus. Sylvester Willis to the line. Willis with six points on the afternoon. 50 to 39. Drake's last win, by the way, against Southern Illinois. I have to go back to February of 1999. It's been dominated by the Salukis, an eight-game winning streak. Tatum picks it up. Tries to find Willis, who dunks it, but travels before he does so. 
Oh, it looked pretty. I'd like to see that one again. And Matt Painter says, guys, let's slow down. Just slow down. We've got the lead. You see the good pass that time by Tatum. Yep, just one extra hop, right? Just like Murphy did on the other end. A good hustle to force this turnover. Guess who was right in the middle of it? Darren Brooks. Jamal Tatum gets credit for the steal, but Brooks again with the quick hands. Under 10 minutes to go. on the shot clock for the Bulldogs. Here's Joshua Robinson in the lane and gets it blocked. And Willis has it. This Lukey's going to get a good offensive look, I'm sure, on this possession. He's trying to slow things down a little bit. Matt Painter says, get the ball to Brooks. Let's work some clock. Make Drake work on the half-court set. They don't want to play defense for 30 seconds. Darren Brooks inside. Kept it alive. <laughs> How did he get that ball back? 22 for Darren Brooks. Let's talk about a nose for the ball. Mm -hmm. That young man has a great feel for this game, and it's something that you can't teach. Drake needs a bucket. They answer with a three. Quantel Murphy. Back to 10. Jamal Tatum in the front court for Southern Illinois. They have led throughout this game. From the opening tip, they have led. Somebody's got to stop this guy right here because he's just having a field day. 24 for Brooks. Putting on a show is Darren Brooks. Matt Painter's not even running an offense. He's saying, give it to number one. We're going to go one four. Everybody else stand along the baseline. Until they stop Darren Brooks, we're not doing anything different. Richie, yes, inside the arc. Tough shot. We're under eight minutes to go. Ten-point lead. Triple team, Tatum trying to get out of it, and he will. Boy, the Southern Guard's doing a great job stepping through those yeah. double teams. They're not trying to dribble out of them. They're being strong with the ball, stepping through. Ryan Turner with the basketball. Missouri Valley Conference, game of the week, our first regular season action, brought to you by State Farm. Warren, an open look, and the young man from Washington, Missouri, knocked it down. Well, he can do that. You have to honor that. You have to get up and contest that shot. Even though he's their five man, he will knock that down. Leads his club in the field goal percentage to Josh Warren, 57%. We'll whistle and a foul against Brooks. Remember both teams in that bonus, so Sean Brooks will go to the line. The foul on Darren Brooks of Southern oh, Illinois. Darren Brooks has had a huge day, and in this half, he is seven of nine. Sean Brooks, the uh, sophomore from San Antonio, Texas, hits the first of his two free throws. And now, this is what Drake is going to be able to do. And wait until Dr. Tom Davis gets a little bit better quality athlete in this school. Year two or three in his regime and starts rolling out 10 to 12 players. They're going to be tough. But we mentioned that Darren Brooks has been one of the stories in the Missouri Valley Conference the last couple of seasons. He's 11 of 19 and 24 points on the afternoon. Ten-point lead for Southern Illinois. They're coming off their second straight regular season MVC title last year. And at 16 regular season wins a year ago. And uh, the leader now this season, and remember, only a junior is Darren Brooks. Well, he's doing it on both ends of the floor. Member of the All-Valley defensive team. You see here with the block. Yeah, doesn't come down with the arm so as to get a personal foul. And then we see him working on the other end. Again, the presence of mind once the ball is knocked out of his hand to go after it, lay it up. He's playing, he thinks he's back in St. Louis playing in the Anthony Bonner Summer Pro-Am League or over at Jennings High in Wednesday Night Pickup League. A triple-double, and uh, it's going to be done possibly with that steals. Like you said, that's rare if you get it in that fashion. Under seven minutes to play and a 10-point lead for Southern Illinois. They've never trailed in this ballgame. 
Here's Brooks, popping out Warren, Tatum. To Turner. Ten on the shot clock. That's a foul underneath against Corbett. But not only does that stop the clock, but you get a fresh 35 and you go to the line. Yeah, that's a bad foul. Good point. Oh, the shot clock's running down. You've done a great job playing defense for 25 seconds. The last thing you want to do is foul. Force them into a tough shot. Get defensive rebounding position as Dr. Tom just shaking his head, saying we haven't had enough time to teach all the things that I want to teach yet. But he's excited about this team. He says we're going to be a lot better, I promise you, in January and February. We have a system, the system works, it's time tested, people have been doing it for 35 years. He goes, but my guys aren't going to pick it up in, in two months of action, especially young kids. One of two is Willis. Now every possession, very crucial for Drake to get some good looks. Randolph. Oh, they are all over you defensively. The lefty for three. Pulled down by Darren Brooks. Nothing is easy. Everything contested by Southern Illinois. That, to me, has been the difference in this game. The fact that Drake, offensively, has not been able to get in any kind of rhythm. Yeah, and obviously, it hurts not having Luke McDonald. You don't have a go-to player, and you can see them all looking at each other, trying to figure out, am I supposed to do it? Or as Brian Turner with a nice jumper along the baseline. Drake trying to answer. Boy, athletic play, heads up play from Brian Turner. Time now for this day in history, brought to you by the Renaissance Grand Hotel St. Louis, December 6, 1986. Wichita State made 40 of 59 free throws, the fourth highest single game attempt total in league history during a non-conference contest against Fordham. The Renaissance Grand Hotel St. Louis, the official St. Louis Hotel of the Missouri Valley Conference. Scott Highmark, Dan McLaughlin. NBC Game of the Week is brought to you by State Farm. Drake in Southern Illinois. The Salukis with a lead of 59-46. Whistle away from the basketball. That foul is going to go against Young of Southern Illinois. Tony Young from Shamsburg, Illinois. Freshman. Another good-looking young player for the Salukis. They've got a great player from Centralia that signed a letter of intent named Matt Shaw, six foot seven player from Centralia, highly recruited. Teams like St. Louis, teams like Stanford were involved in his recruiting, and Matt Painter and his staff outworked everybody, and they're very excited about him and two red shirts that they have this year sitting out. Kid named Randall Falker and Jamal Foster are going to bolster the front line along with Matt Shaw next year. So the future is very bright for Saluki basketball. Randolph with seven points. Now with eight. 59, 48 lead for Carbondale. That's a good timeout by Matt Painter. The shot clock was at 27. They had two seconds to get it across. 29 to go. You're watching the Missouri Valley Conference Game of the Week presented by State Farm. Looking for the season's hottest styles, Aeropo Style provides the hottest athletically inspired clothes for guys and girls. For store locations, visit our website, aeropostyle.com, A-E-R-O-P-O-S-T-A-L-E.com, Aeropo Style, proud sponsor of the Missouri Valley Conference. Southern Illinois trying to hold on under five and a half to play. First conference game for both these teams. Brooks pops out. He's had a huge afternoon with 24 points. Warren misses that shot over Corver. Corver picked up the rebound and hands it off to Lonnie Randolph. Drake needs to get something going. Randolph out of control, but got it to fall. Lonnie Randolph with 10 points. You've got to set up your pressure. It's time to get some turnovers by Southern Illinois if you're Drake. Yeah, look like over and back, and the fans here in Des Moines are not happy about that. It was, and they got away with it. Here's Warren inside, working inside. Offensive foul, and it's back to Drake. And Lonnie 
Randolph's been a catalyst for the Drake Bulldogs. Again, with his quickness, he's the one player on the Bulldogs roster to get to the basket, throws it up, gets the fortuitous bounce. He got a nine-point ball game with 446. We're going to watch as Turner goes over and then comes back, steps on the line. You can't see it there from our angle. We had a great angle, certainly over and back, but you can see it there in that replay a bit. Definitely came over and back. Big possession this time by Drake. Need to work the clock, get a good shot. Don't rush it. Here's Randolph, out of control again. Drive by Randolph, and uh, he's going to exit stage left. <laughs> well, the good news is he made the one before that. The bad news is he made the one before that and thought that that was his shot, and just a little bit faster than Dr. Tom wants him to play. Well, down by nine, that's an important possession there. You could cut it to six, possibly seven. And he's your experienced guard. He's got to set the tone because the young guys are watching him, and they're saying, okay, that's what our leader is doing. We've got to get a better shot, and he's responsible for getting him a better shot. Doesn't always have to be him shooting it. Sylvester Willis with the basketball. 20 on the shot clock, just over four minutes to play. Here's Korn playing with four fouls. Picked up two quick ones to start the second half. Hairston playing in foul trouble, too. And Corver whistled for the body foul. Again, second time Corver's fouled when the shot clock was under 10 seconds. And that just kills you because it wears you out. You put a guy like Stetson Hairston in the free throw line and knocks the energy out of your ball club. Sure does. Hairston, a very good free throw shooter at 83%. Started every game of his career his first two years. And Hairston leads the team in assist and steals. He was fourth on the team in scoring last season. He's an experienced young man. He and Darren Brooks have started pretty much from day one. They yeah. played in big Sweet 16 NCAA tournament games. So these young men are not going to be phased when they go on the road. Both those players are part of the all-defensive team and most improved team at the Missouri Valley Conference. Back to 10 points, 3.56 to go. Southern Illinois with a lead of 10 with 3.56 to go in the State Farm NBC Game of the Week. Scott Highmark, Dan McLaughlin. We turn to our play of the game brought to you by Rawlings. And, of course, it is Mr. Brooks. Who else? Darren Brooks. Drake had cut the lead to single digits. Matt Painter says, get the ball to Darren Brooks. They set a high screen for him. He doesn't use the screen going to the basket. Pretty with the left hand. That's what your leaders do. That's what great players like Darren Brooks give your ball club when they need it. Stop the bleeding as uh, Drake was on a little bit of a run. Darren Brooks, his third career double-double this afternoon. 24 points, 10 rebounds, closing in on a triple-double. He's two steals away from that. To add to the uh, afternoon that he has had, as Corver gets it, now Randolph trying to penetrate, leans in, and he's off the mark. But to put in perspective what he's been able to do, Darren Brooks, 11 field goals, a career high, as Corver. Let's hope he's all right with the great hustle. 19 field goal attempts, that's a career high. And he's two points off the tying his career high for points, which of course would be 26. We'll see the hustle again. Lonnie Randolph forcing something in the lane that time, and the ball goes out. And you see Mr. Corver going after it. Leapfrogging the strike bench. Tatum, good lead. Watch out. Hairstead with the flush. Good presence of mind as Tatum got a quick look up and uh, was able to feed Hairston for the two. 12 point lead, under three and a half to go. Here's Randolph, throws it away. Hairston, again, no good. Over the back, Jamal Tatum. Not a smart play from the freshman. No, again, but on the other end, Dan, Drake has to take advantage of their offensive opportunities, and Ronnie Randolph a little bit out of control. They've got to find a way to get the ball going at the basket. Quantel Murphy had a great stretch early in the second half, and we haven't heard from him in the last 10 minutes. Pete Eggers at the line. His first point of the afternoon. Oh, 
Handoff back on the bench. Had a tough afternoon. Eggers misses the second. Hairston pulls it away. Under three minutes to play. The Salukis with a lead of 6 to 2, 51. Hairston keeps it alive to Corn. On Corbin. 12 on the shot clock. Brooks misses the three. Drake holds it away, and the rebound goes to Quantel Murphy. This is Sean Brooks. Now it's a desperate situation for Drake. Every possession really counts under two and a half to play. They got to turn it up a notch. I'd like to see him get something going at the basket. Eggers throws it away. A whistle and a foul. That goes against Murphy. We can see what a young team Tom Davis has. They're all kind of looking at each other like, are you going to do it or do I need to do it? There's no one central point on the offensive end. And, and we talked to Tom Davis this morning, and he said, this is something we're going to have to learn with. There's not a great uh, deal of difference but from our best player to our 11th player. And oh, by the way, nobody's going to practice more guys than Dr. Tom Davis. They have 19 guys that practice Amazing. every day. 19, including five off -offs. Or six walk-ons, I guess, can you get 13 scholarships. Hairston with just four points this afternoon. Came in averaging nine. If Southern Illinois wins this game, this would be their best start in 10 years. Rich Heron had a 93 squad that started 5-0. Their RPI, Dan, they're number seven in the RPI. And I know it's very early in the season, but when you get nine, conference wins at Wyoming, at Wisconsin, Milwaukee, you're setting yourself up for a pretty high RPI. They've got a huge game on January 2nd at home. They play Charlotte. That's a team from Conference USA, from a power conference. If they can beat them, they'll put themselves in a real good position if they can take care of business in the Valley. And Southern Illinois, having gone to the Sweet 16 two years ago, played Mizzou to one point last year before they're knocked out, and they were at large uh, receivers as far as getting into the tournament the last two years. That, that plays into the fact of what could happen this year. They have some credibility with the selection committee, no exactly. doubt. Corn throws it away. Paul Pierce had to survive the main streets of L.A., and basketball was his ticket to fame and fortune. But a violent brawl nearly ended it all. This week, find out about the Paul Pierce you never knew as Beyond the Glory takes you inside the hidden world of sports' biggest stars. Beyond the Glory, tomorrow at 9, only on Fox Sports Net. Paul Pierce from the streets of L.A. to Kansas. And now into the NBA with the Boston Celtics. He'll be on Beyond the Glory tomorrow, only here on Fox Sports Net. Matt Painter in his first season as head coach of the Salukis at the age of 33. Third youngest head coach in Southern Illinois history. Top assistant for five seasons under Bruce Weber, now at Illinois. 94 graduate, as we mentioned before, Purdue, where he played under legendary Big Ten coach Gene Cady. Powell underneath, and he's fouled by Korn, and that's it for Brad Korn. That's five personal. With 137 to go, he's done. Warren fouls out. Fifth year senior with six points. And Warren will check back in. Dan, Matt Painter felt real comfortable coming into this game. He's a little concerned about his team being overconfident, but we talked about playing against Bruce Pearl in that same system that Dr. Tom Davis plays. And not only did they play a team like that, but they, he's got a young man on his staff, Paul Lusk, one of the great players in Southern Illinois University history who played for Dr. Tom Davis for a year at Iowa. So Paul Lust, there he is. You see him right there. He did the scout today for Southern Illinois in their walkthrough. They knew exactly what Dr. Tom Davis was going to bring at him today. And Paul Lusk is providing for Matt Painter what Matt Painter provided for Bruce Weber. Got a great coaching staff over there, Shane Hawkins and Rodney Watson. The, the grandfather in the Missouri Valley. Been with the Saluki 16 years. A whistle out of foul. Well, this was earlier today, and as uh, Scotty just mentioned, first year Southern Illinois assistant coach Paul Lust played for current Drake coach Dr. Tom Davis. Well, the latter, of course, was a head coach at Iowa. Lusk was a freshman guard. That was the 90-91 season. And uh, he suffered a knee injury, and then all of a sudden he transferred to Southern Illinois. 
We played for three years and was just an outstanding player in this conference. They had some fantastic teams, went to the tournament twice, almost beat Syracuse in the first round his senior year, played with Marcus Timmons and Chris Carr, who had about a six-year stint in the NBA. And Paul Lusk was a, a big component, grew up in Southern Illinois and, and still a legend in those parts. Tatum has had a big day, the uh, true freshman at Jefferson City. Here's Randolph out of control again. And the lefty will try it for three, and it's no good. I got white! White! And we'll stay with Drake with 102 to play. Well, you look at this Drake team, and you, and you think, what if? What if they had Luke McDonald? Just that one player, that go-to player that you had to honor. Because then you got a guy like Lonnie Randolph. Instead of trying to score, he can penetrate to find a shooter like Luke McDonald. But he doesn't really have that option, so he has to do a little bit more than he's probably capable of doing. This one had a foul underneath. And Stetson Hairston. But you got to credit Tom Davis. You can tell, even in the shoot around today, the kids love playing for him. He's a true teacher at the heart of what he does. And he, he loves these kids to death. He just loves teaching these kids. Sure, he wants to win. I believe that he will get it done, but he enjoys working with these young men, teaching them the fundamentals of the game, and teaching them more, more than that, more than about life, and going through adversity, and what, what you have to do to overcome adversity. Now the referees will uh, converge because Stetson Hairston has five personal fouls. And I believe, Scotty, if you get five, you got to sit. It's five in college, okay. six in the pros. That's what I thought. Maybe Matt Painter, one of the fans were getting on Matt Painter a little bit, and he said, hey, I got 30 seconds. I want my full 30 seconds. Matt Painter and Southern Illinois, by the way, tied with Duke for the nation's longest home court winning streak in 29 games. How, How about, about that? that? And they're doing it today on the road. They were outstanding last season. 24 and 7, made it to the field of 64, their second straight regular season NBC title. Get 16 wins, 16 in this conference. We're under a minute to play with 66 54 being our score. Brooks will inbound, looking for help. And throws it off the backboard. Okay, that's the first mistake that Darren Brooks has made all day. But they're going to say that the ball was tipped. Even when he makes a mistake, he gets away with it. And a timeout taken by Brooks. Southern Illinois struggling to uh, get the basketball in. We're under a minute to go. We're Southern Illinois in control. Southern Illinois, a lead of 66-54. Welcome back to the Knapp Center. In Des Moines, Iowa, time now to announce our GHP players of the game. And for Drake, it's Quantel Murphy, 12 points and 10 rebounds off the bench this afternoon. And for our player of the game from Southern Illinois, Darren Brooks, huge afternoon, 24 points, 10 rebounds and 8 steals. Almost a triple-double. Well, he's still got 59.8 seconds to get those two steals to post the first triple-double of the young season. Quantel Murphy, his first double-double of his career. Those players of the game brought to you by GHP. Choose a great health plan for your family. Choose GHP. Foul against Brooks is first. Turner is at the line, hits the first. Turner with six. Brooks leads all scores with 24. Well, Turner's had a nice ball game quietly, handling the pressure predominantly for Southern Illinois. I thought he's done a good job just running the show for the Salukis. Joshua Robinson couldn't get it to fall to put back up and in by Sean Brooks. Southern Illinois, by the way, their last nine points have been at the free throw line. And a timeout taken by Drake. It's 68-56, 52.1 to go. Southern Illinois has never trailed in this ball game. Looks like they're going to improve to 5-0 overall and 1-0 in conference play. They were predicted to finish 
fifth in the preseason poll. And uh, by watching them today, I don't know if that number five uh, prediction is going to be correct. Take note, Wichita State. Take note, yep. Creighton, Bradley, SMS. The Salukis are not giving up their title easily. But as you mentioned, Matt Painter has done a heck of a job recruiting and what he's got coming back next year. He's just reloading. If you look at their roster, they lose Willis and Korn, but they've got Randall Falker, Matt Shaw, Jamal Foster coming in. Brooks Hairston are both back. Lamar Owens only a junior. Jamal Tatum, we've talked about what a force he's going to be in the Valley in the next few years. Josh Warren's only a junior. So the nucleus is intact, not only this year, but next. And he's got reinforcements coming in and, and new recruits. Last 10 points for the Salukis have been from the charity strike. Here's Brooks. Chance at a three-point play for Sean Brooks. 43.2 seconds remaining, 11-point lead. Brooks with nine. Full court pressure again. They will foul immediately. Tatum is fouled by Nick Grant. And I believe that's it for Grant. That's his fifth personal. And it is. His afternoon is done. Grant fouls out with five points. The freshman from Virginia. Dr. Tom likes, likes his young players. Nick Grant's going to be a fine player in this league, only a freshman. Cooter Zuski's only a freshman. Quantel Murphy's a sophomore. Sean Brooks is a sophomore. Clayton Corver is a freshman. So he's got a good nucleus intact. And really, these are the guys that walked in. It's kind of like high school. You don't know who your players are going to be until they walk through the classroom on the first day. He took the job so late, he wasn't really able to recruit his own players. So these are he's just working with the guys that, that showed up you know, October 15th when practice began. Tatum hits the first, 11 now in a row from the line for Southern Illinois. The difference in this game, four of 24 shooting for Drake in the first half, 16%. Brooks with the two, and it's down to a nine-point lead with 33.7 to go. Another timeout from the Nep Center. Well, if you're Dr. Tom Davis, you tell your team never quit. You never know what could happen with 33.7 to go, and uh, three-pointers certainly an effect in college basketball, down by nine. Well, they're going to trap this first pass and see if they can't get an interception, but you can't continue to just foul because Southern Illinois is too good a free-throw shooting team. Here's Walker, steps back, smart play. Takes some time off the clock with well, 30 uh, seconds to go. And that's a good substitution that time by Matt Painter. Get a shooter in like Ryan Walker, not only a good free throw shooter, but a young man who handles the ball a little bit as well. But this will be his first free throw attempt of the season. Our thanks to Curtis Lorenz and Kevin Shank and the crew from Metro Sports. Outstanding job as always. Walker with four points. He has a three-pointer, now that free throw. Lead back to double figures, it's at 10. Make it 11. Nice stroke. Now, don't foul him again if you're Drake. <laughs> Pretty confident, you can tell. Ronnie Randall. Lead is at 8 with 23.9 to go. Dr. Tom Davis, certainly a big name inside the Missouri Valley Conference, really adds a lot of credibility to what's happening with this conference. And uh, the conference commissioner, Doug Elgin, by the way, was a junior at Lafayette College in 1971-72. I don't want to give away Doug's age, by the way. But <laughs> you <he's> just did. <laughs> Sorry, Doug, but he was a junior at that time, and Dr. Tom Davis was a coach at that time at Lafayette. And uh, that's when Doug said, you know, I really got my passion for basketball started then, and it was because of what Coach Davis was doing with that school. Well, it's a, it's a small world, and Dr. Tom's been around this small world in a lot of different places at Lafayette, at, at Boston College, at Stanford, and certainly at Iowa, where he, won, where he won 269 games. He's an institution in college basketball. A lot of young young coaches, and I say young coaches, guys like Gary Williams at Maryland. Yeah. They learned under the tutelage of Tom Davis. He's got his own coaching fraternity and coaching tree, and it's added a lot. And there's been a lot of not only 
notoriety in the Missouri Valley Conference in the Midwest, but national notoriety because Tom Davis is back into coaching. You look at a lot of guys that have retired. You look at Charlie Spoonauer, who was at St. Louis, who retired and got back into coaching at UNLV. You look at uh, uh, Dick Bennett, who was at uh, University of Wisconsin, now back into coaching at uh, Washington State, and then Dr. Tom. And these guys are coming back, not necessarily to win national champions, but to give back because they love teaching the game of basketball to young men. Tatum with 11. This is the second. Here come the Bulldogs. Boy, no foul is called on that. Well, I tell you, there was a lot of contact right there. And Walker comes away with it. My goodness. 73-64. You make the call here. Ah, a slight bit of contact, but no call. <laughs> Well, the, the 5,000 people that are left here in the NAP Center certainly thought there was some contact. And from our angle and that angle, it sure looked like there was. And Southern, the beneficiaries of that, and they get a chance to put the smooth shooting Ryan Walker on the free throw line. Brian Hogan, a senior from Fort Madison, Iowa, has checked in the game for the Drake Bulldogs. Ryan Walker is at the line for Southern Illinois. He jinxed him. He sure did. Boy, the way he looked, how confident he's smiling. <laughs> I don't think he misses too many free throws. Under 10 to go. Lonnie Randolph will let her fly from three. It's no good. It's pulled down by Willis. Another foul in 3.8 seconds remaining. So Southern Illinois is going to go to 5-0, and 1-0 and in conference play. This is the earliest they have started in nearly 10 years, by the way, in conference play. And uh, for Southern Illinois, they will take on Southern Utah out of the Mid-Continent Conference. That will be their next game on December 13th. And they have Iowa State at home. That will be a huge test for them. Iowa State out of the Big 12. How about Northern Iowa playing Iowa State to the buzzer the other night? Point lead. Point seven seconds remaining. Walker gets it off the inbound. And that's going to do it. Southern Illinois led throughout. They win their first conference game. It happens to be on the road, and the final is 75-66. Well, Drake played as hard as they possibly can, but they played a confident veteran ball club in Southern Illinois. Tom Davis will have a danger te dangerous team come February, I believe. But like I said before, Wichita State, Creighton, Bradley, SMS, take notice because SIU is not going away. They're not relinquishing their title very easily. Darren Brooks had a lot to say here today for the Salukis. With 24 points, UNI, Illinois State, our next televised game along the Missouri Valley Conference on December.